Ah, yes, don't you just love that theme? No? Well, I mean, it is kind of cringe, right? But that's okay, because sometimes in pro wrestling, the things that don't make sense from the jump turn out to be just fine. But, of course, there are other times, especially when it comes to some questionable entrance music choices, that are still quite baffling to comprehend. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis. This is Wrestling Behind the Themes. Please do subscribe, because here are 10 entrance theme songs that left fans really confused. Listen, before you New Japan marks get your panties all in a bunch, I know that when John Moxley used Wild Thing by the Trogs for his entrance on the May 12th, 2021 episode of AEW Dynamite, it was done as a tribute to Atsushi Onita, the Japanese hardcore legend and pioneer of wrestling death matches. However, if you had no backstory or context like I just explained and were in Jacksonville that night, you were probably utterly confused and saying to yourself, what the flippity flub is this nonsense? Nonsense. And where is Moxley's violent and edgy badass theme song? Yes, it was indeed super awkward, but Tony Khan and AEW remedied the situation by basically saying, up your butt, Joe Boo, and switching to a cover of Wild Thing that was popularized in the film Major League. I come from money. What's more awkward than being one of the 12 people to actually attend a DiBiase Posse tailgate party? Well, probably having your last name associated with said soiree. Growing up, Ted DiBiase watched his father, the Million Dollar Man, prove that everyone had a price and dreamed of one day taking the DiBiase legacy into the next millennium. But this couldn't have been what he had in mind. Ted Jr.'s dream becoming reality should have been easy money. But the brutal truth was that the kid lacked the charisma his daddy had. Now, one of the things about most of the entrance tunes we've heard is that they lean more towards rock. But the confusing part about the younger DiBiase I Come From Money theme with its auto-tuned rap tracks was that it was too fun and upbeat and didn't match the gimmick of a trust fund baby who wanted to hang out with the unwashed masses and grill some meats. What up, Mutt? Oh, yeah. A majority of Randy Savage's career was all about glitz and glamour, pomp and circumstance, and of course, macho madness. However, what really drove Randy cuckoo was during the twilight of his WWE career when he was spending more time in the broadcast booth than inside the squared circle. So a frustrated Savage said, see you later Vince, and relaunched his in-ring career by signing with WCW. But upon his return, after an injury layoff in 1999, Savage was suddenly a lot more muscular, his wardrobe changed to all black, and in a surprise move that confused fans, he also had completely different entrance music. Gone was pomp and circumstance, replaced by the edgy industrial rock track, What Up Mach, which did wind up endearing him to a whole new set of fans. Oh, I know you hate that fact, but you ain't gotta look at me. If anything helped fuel the term X-Pac heat, it had to be this awkward entrance music for the X-Factor back in 2001. I guess someone honestly said, hey, let's let Uncle Cracker do a song for a group of our guys. And absolutely no one punched that person in the face until their hand broke. I mean, this theme is all over the place. None of it was good. And as soon as it hit, fans were ready to boo for all the wrong reasons. Starting out like a boy band tune before transitioning into a strange mix of hip-hop and early 90s club classics, the only factor this song had was ensuring this faction was a joke from the very get-go. You know it's the Mac Militant. Coming to get it all. Let's be honest here, okay? When you think of cool gangster rap, Teddy Long isn't someone who immediately pops into your head, am I right? Of course I am. Teddy is basically 100 pounds soaking wet and not gangsta at all. So what confused fans who weren't in the know is that prior to Long becoming the general manager of SmackDown Playa, he was a regular manager and his final protege was a guy by the name of Rodney Mack. 
In fact, this theme song is named after Rodney and called Mac Militant. Well, unfortunately, Mac wound up getting fired, but Teddy dug the song so much that he kept it for himself, even when it came time for him to be a babyface authority figure. And that's where the awkwardness lies, because nothing goes as hard as a tiny little bald man in eyeglasses wearing an ugly suit at least two sizes too big and shuffling out to this jam. Somewhat remembered for his smooth 1980 yak rot hit Steal Away, singer-guitarist journeyman Robbie Dupree, no relation to Max or Maxine, yeah, wasn't exactly the type of music act you'd peg for the world of sports entertainment in the late 1980s. But as a favor to his buddy and the real, real American Rick Derringer, Dupree performed the wussiest wrestling tune ever, Girls in Cars. Now somehow a cheese dick song about one man's love-hate relationship with, well, with girls and cars, became the most awkward theme music for the white meat, rah-rah, babyface tag team of Rick Martel and Tito Santana, known as Strike Force. How this adult contemporary composition wound up accompanying the Strike Farce to the ring is beyond me. But it left all three fans of Robbie Dupree absolutely confused when Jimmy Hart sang the song at the 1987 Slammy Awards. I guess Robbie had nothing better to do, huh? If you would have told me at the beginning of 2022 that daddy-ass Billy Gunn would be the most over-wrestler of the year, I would have kicked you straight in the jimmy. Now, even though the creative wasn't always perfect, Billy was someone that received multiple opportunities in the WWE during highly competitive eras and with iconic performers, but just couldn't get over the hump as a single star. But let's forget about Rockabilly for a sec. Gunn's 1999 solo push remains the catalyst for his mid-main event run due to the E's insistence on calling him Mr. Ass all the time, including his awkward ass man theme song. As if emphasizing his rear end constantly was a good thing, it was the over-the-top lyrics outlining the many ways in which Gunn took his love for the gluteus to the max. Granted, the song also mentioned how he occasionally kicked an ass or two, but by that point, fans were too busy scratching their heads and covering their ears instead of shaking their booties enough to care. For all the legendary entrance theme music that the Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart has created during his wrestling career, his tremendous body of work was almost erased entirely because of this stinker of a song for the WCW tag team of Buff Bagwell and Scotty Riggs, aka the American Males. Now, I don't think the fans were necessarily left in a state of confusion as to what the name of this ambiguously gay duo was, because throughout its two and a half brutal minutes of torture, the words American males are repeated about four million times. This track is your usual WCW butt rock, only this time it's dressed up with some lame techno sound effects, robot vocals, and awkward AF lyrics that made Bagwell and Riggs out to be violent sex offenders instead of male erotic dancers. Kenneth Slick Johnson is one of the most influential African-American managers sports entertainment has ever seen. Now, while the self-proclaimed doctor of style was certainly cooler than the other side of the pillow, unfortunately, his hit entrance theme song, Jive Soul Bro, left many fans confused when they saw the Slickster with the one-man gang and his awkward African dream gimmick. Once a huge, burly biker, the big man transformed into Akeem, began speaking solely in jive and claimed to be from deepest darkest africa all the while as a very obvious fat white man his dancing was also awfully cringe as he tried his best to boogie down the aisle matching slick dance step for dance step before squashing his hapless foes eventually gang would drop the funky persona and return to his roots but not before awkwardly embracing his inner soul Of 
of all the millions and millions of matches and thousands of theme songs played over the years. Unfortunately, the only thing anyone ever remembers about the Sandman as a pro wrestler is that he bashed a beer can across his forehead and then stumbled his way to the ring as the sinister sounds of Metallica's Enter Sandman blasted from the arena speakers. However, simply put, when your whole existence is defined by one single piece of music and then suddenly it's no longer available for you to use, pardon the pun, but you might as well bury your head in the sand. The Sandman's run during 2006's WWE CW reboot was a waste of time without his iconic song, leaving fans confused but also enlightened as it showed that perhaps no other entrance theme was as important to a wrestler's career as much as Enter Sandman was to this ECW hardcore legend.